Now, looking through the eyes of a Linux systems programmer, files are most often created as a sort of side effect of the open call, where we include the ocreate flag and specify the initial mode of the file. The file is created along with the link. There's also a system call called create, which simply creates files and links. Create doesn't open the file, it doesn't return a file descriptor. There's a nice story, I don't know if it's really true, uh, that Ken Thompson, the inventor of Unix, was once asked if he'd do anything differently if he invented Unix again. And apparently he thought for a moment and then said, yeah, I'd spell Kreat with an E. The implication presumably being that he thought he'd got everything else right. Now you can create an additional link to a file with the link system call. It needs the existing name and a new name and it gives the file an additional name. It's the system call that lies behind the ln command that you're probably familiar with. And you can remove a link again with unlink. Again, it's the system call that lies behind the rm command. Now we tend to think of rm as deleting a file, but that's not strictly true. It just removes a link. If it's the only remaining link, then the file will actually be deleted. Its inode and its data blocks will be freed. There's one important exception to this. If some process has the file open, it will not be deleted. It will remain as an anonymous file as long as there is a file descriptor open on it. Some programs make explicit use of this behavior. However, we can't reattach a name to a file whose link count has fallen to zero. Let's be clear about this business of linking. To begin with, we've created here a file. We've given it a link, foo. Here's the link. We create an additional link to the file called bar. Here it is. These two links are of exactly equal status. It's not a question of there being a master link uh, and a subsidiary link. It's true that one of the links has been there longer than the other one, but there are no timestamps kept on the uh, on the links themselves. As we've seen, the timestamps are in the inodes and are associated with the file. So foo and bar are simply two links to the file. The file has simply two names. There's only one file. If we take one of the links out, let's suppose we unlink foo, that's the, the link that's been there the longest, then we simply are left with the remaining link bar. Now, the links to a file don't all have to be in the same directory, uh, and typically aren't. But you can't have a link to a file on some other file system, say on a different disk partition or logical volume. If you look at this diagram, it's clear why. A link indexes into the inode table on this partition. It can't index into the table on some other partition. There's also a rule that you can't create additional links to directories. This rule is important because it's what constrains the directory structure to be a tree and not some messy, loopy kind of graph structure. Now, there is a different kind of link known as a symbolic link, which doesn't have the restrictions um, of what you can do with hard links. A symbolic link is basically a small file, so it has its own inode. But the file just contains the name of another file, sometimes known as the target file. In this sense, symbolic links are a little like shortcuts on Windows. And symbolic links can do things that hard links can't. They can link to directories. You need to be careful not to abuse that facility. And they can link across file system boundaries. How do you create them? Well, the system call is symlink. It needs the old name or the existing name 
uh, and the new name. And again, this is what lies behind the uh, command line ln minus s for creating symbolic links, which again, you're probably familiar with. Removing a symbolic link is done with unlink, the same way you remove a regular hard link. And it's the link, the sim link, that's removed here, not the target file. The differences between hard links and symbolic links are important. The key difference is that a hard link associates a name with an inode number. A symbolic link associates a name with another name. So, if we operate on something that's a symbolic link, maybe we specified it as a name on the command line, for example, are we going to operate on the symbolic link, or are we going to operate on the target file that it points to? Well, it depends. And again, looking at this from the system call level, some system calls follow symbolic links. For example, if I open a file that's a symbolic link, then that will actually follow the symbolic link and it will open the target file and return a file descriptor on that file. So subsequent read and writes will refer to the target file. Translating that up to the command line level, that would mean, for example, that if I ran less to examine the contents of a symbolic link, I'm actually going to see the contents of the target file. Some system calls don't follow symbolic links. Uh, a classic example of this, as I've already mentioned, is unlink. If I unlink a symbolic link, it's the symlink I'm taking out, not the target file. 